this is, this is, this is. I'm booking a month and a half tour right now for myself, you know, my stuff, because um, Knives won't tour until next year. Um, but we're playing our, our normal, like, regional shows and wherever we can, one-offs and, you know, just festivals and things like that. Always, but, yeah, always busy, promotion. Huh? Always. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all I want to do. So if Knives isn't doing stuff, then I'm pushing my tours, you know. And, and you know, they have to be booked so far in advance. So if I'm just like something didn't pan out, then I had to like kind of scrounge to tour my to make myself available to tour somewhere else, you know. Yeah, it's all you want to yeah. do. That that that's what I got from all that. It's like all you want to yeah. do is music. <laughs> all you want to do is tour. All you want to do is play and write yeah. and record. All the things. Is there anything you don't like about what you, what it is you have to do as a musician? But just doing it myself, you know. Like I'm, I've been doing it for a while, but. It's still like the D, the D, you know, do it yourself, do I, I do my stuff. Um, like I wish I had a booking agent uh, that can put me in front of the big people, so I'm not doing it because, like, it, yeah, while you're on tour, I can technically go online and try and book and stuff like that. But like, between like driving myself around or playing these shows, hotels, things like that, like I really can't do anything real until I get back. So as always, combo after a tour of like yeah well, i'm not doing anything and i gotta try and book the next thing so like if someone was working on it while i'm on tour just hey can you do these dates can you do these dates then i can just go back out you know that's a crazy like that. idea what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> damn that, that all kind of, right that's where i'm at you, you know, know what we want to constantly do it but this is all good we should just we're going to keep all probably all this because i mean uh everybody welcome this is danny attack <laughs> It's a podcast, but it's a conversation. So I, I just wanted yeah. to kind of get that out there before we get too far into it. But I love that you're just you're going all in, and yeah. you kind of recognize. Obviously, you you need a team of people to really make this happen. I don't care who you are. I don't care how talented you are. Eventually, if you're gonna break through to a bigger audience, you need help. You need a team. You need somebody that's there to like fight for you. Right. That's that's the best advice I could give anybody starting out is you have to have that passion for you and then you have to build people around you that have similar passions. Yeah, that's having having that team. I mean, it's if everyone has that collective dream or goal and everyone's doing what they can to, to get there, you know, like then that's you, there's so much that can be can be accomplished. So everyone just like wants it. Yeah, it's a dream. It's, it's a dream to have a team, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The dream. The dream team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're right, though, because doing all the driving, all the playing, talking to f fans along the way, yeah. kind of being up, being up, promoting. That's a that's a full time job, and then also booking shows, talking to promoters, talking to uh, maybe other talent buyers. I don't know who you're talking to, like in, at clubs, talent buyers, maybe. Um, that is a full-time job too. So I can understand how your like yeah. brain is not wanting to try to get into that on tour. Yeah. Um, but you well, there's do also that. Yeah. Sorry. There's also that. Plus I do have a full-time job. Do you, that what? I, that I'm luckily <laughs> able to do on the road. Okay. Um, okay. Tell like us about like that. They, so like a little bit, they don't know that I, that Danny attack is even a thing. Like that I'm, I'm a musician, things like that. So, <laughs> So I do have. They're like, not going to see this podcast, laptop. right? I work in like the payment slash finance industry, um, doing like analytical stuff, and I have this rig I have hooked, like I set up in my car, so okay. like I'm online and working while I drive. Not the safest thing. While you drive, I'm definitely doing it while I drive. Yeah, like it doesn't like so I, I tour. I can tour whether it's overseas or the U.S. And as long as I have my laptop or like my iPad is what I normally use if I'm on the road. Like, which makes it a little bit more difficult to be booking as well, because I do have to make sure if someone emails me, I got, I got to get to that, whether I can do it on, you know, right then and there or I have to pull over for two minutes and write an email, then get back on the road. So I'm always giving myself a couple extra hours per day on the road mm. for times I have to pull over and then get back, you know, get back to it. Genius. I'm impressed. <laughs> Honestly, like. Companies need people like you. The fact that you're doing this and you can work and, and do your passions, like, I don't know. Do you do a good job at your at, at the actual job? Or do you, are you I, just half-assed? I believe, 
No. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I am doing it to max capacity because I don't want to be like, uh, um, be like, uh, if I'm not doing a good job, then they like, well, hey, you're not doing this and that. Like, I, I don't want to not have the job because I need it to, you know, support myself and, you know, I have an apartment at home and things I got to pay for. So I do everything I can so I'm not looked at, you know, type of deal. Like, oh, he's doing exactly what we need to do. There's no question about it. Oh, why isn't he answering emails or why isn't he doing this? You know, what's going on? So, like, I'm doing everything to the best of my abilities. That way I'm, I'm not. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I don't, like, quote, unquote, get in trouble, you know, things like that. Yeah, you do. You're, you're not turning any heads at work, so they're not. Right, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't um, matter. The one doesn't do. affect the other, like um, at all, uh, which is it's hard to balance, especially like for shows. Um, you know, like uh, so I work. Tech, the company is located here in Florida, but my I have uh, West Coast hours, so my time is eight to five basically. But if I'm on the road on the East Coast, my time is really eleven to eight. So if I have like sound check, I got to get to this, the you know do all that stuff with the show starting, whatever that is. I have my my laptop in the club as well so that's just always on <laughs> always on wi-fi right figuring it out so it doesn't like i make sure it doesn't affect what me. if you don't have wi-fi in a club that that's mobile more thing at like um like overseas if i'm touring overseas and i'll try and take a vacation type of stuff and if nothing else i, I hotspot from my uh, my phone like i make sure my phone has the best like plan this and that so you're working on vacation yeah <laughs> yeah you don't stop imagine what you could do if you didn't have to work Right. <laughs> That's what <Wow>. I'm saying. <laughs> That's like, like they say about, you know, the circle of poverty. People can't get out of poverty because they're so anxiety ridden about how to make it through the day, how to make it through tomorrow rather than planning for the future. You need a team to help you plan shows in advance, right? get you on that path. That That's similar to like a poverty thing is like you, you just need some, some leeway. Um, yeah. Man, it's crazy. I love that technology really has brought brought punk rock into your life in in a way that you could you could really almost do it full time and work a full time job. Yeah, yeah, and I definitely won't not do the work because I'm doing it so successfully now with doing both. That why not have both sources of income, you know, and just have that extra cushion. Absolutely, to do it. I mean, I've been there for five years now. And I've gotten like promotions and things like that. Like I make pretty good money doing it to where like it, it, I don't have to worry about on the road when my bills are being paid and car payments and, you know, my rent, stuff like that. And I can do it also tour on a dime. You know, if someone's like, Hey, we have this tour coming up. Can you jump on it? Like, yeah, let's go. That's the deal. That's the new rich is like, can you tour on a dime? Can you get your bills paid? Like, right. that's a rich musician. You, you are a rich <laughs> musician. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I, I, well, no, yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 40, I'm 42, so I grew up, like, in the 90s and all that stuff like that. So I know, like, the rich musician back in the day was breaking even, if that, you know? Right. You're always going to, like, be out of pocket on everything, you know, if you're not touring, especially if you're not touring. Touring is, like, you have to. You have to do it, you know? It costs a lot. I mean, it, it does. we're doing pretty well, but, like, you know, it's <clears> taken us a long time to get here, you know? Um, I, I, I just love, I just love the ingenuity that you have going on where you can literally do both well, um, multitasking. I'm going to admit it's not my forte. <laughs> it's hard for me to do a lot of things at once. Like when I'm really into songwriting, I can do other things. Like I'm like mm-hmm. pr- pr- producing a video, this kind of things like that. I can do edits on the side, but like my brain is mostly just thinking about songs. So when you're, when you're thinking about songs when you're in the songwriting mode you're still working too right like you kind of have your day-to-day yeah. do you do you mostly just schedule i don't know if you schedule songwriting but you just do that later in the day uh it's it's i don't know cause, yeah because you can't really schedule songwriting well i can't at least like i have to right. like it has to just come to me there i don't know there's ever been a time where i've just sat like all right i'm gonna write a song and then write a song it's always like something comes to me or like some type of one liner. And then I just kind of go off of that at any time of the day. My I'll definitely put my work on hold if something mm. comes up like that. Okay. But because of my work is not like, like I, I, I don't talk to anyone face to face. There's no phone calls. I do have like my, my coworkers that we have like a chat, but like if an email comes in, I have leeway to just take a few minutes or, you know, it does not have to be answered right away. 
Mm. I do it while on the road because I'm just like the afraid afraid part, you know. Yeah, yeah, you want to uh, keep it rolling. But like, I can put it, I can put it on the back burner for a little bit and do it, or kind of just write it real quick and then get back to the songwriting if that's what I'm doing. But I do never like a schedule. Yeah, I was like trying to do some paperwork type paperwork, what you know, like uh, filling in forms online uh, last week, in fact, and I was like. I had this idea for a song. Same deal. Just like put that aside. Like I know I'm supposed to be doing this, but I, yeah. I'm sorry. I got to do this. This is more important to me, you know, right. in, in the, in the long scale of life, you know, the longer road that we were on songs yeah. are always more important. Like the, the feeling you get when you finish a song, isn't it the best? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. when you're like almost done, that's almost even better because you know, it's done basically. And you're just tweaking. So yeah. you're in that like honeymoon yep. stage of like an idea. Yeah, you just kind of play it back and just kind of add the sparkles to it. I yeah. guess you can say just like that. I love the I love the job aspect of what you're doing. Not a lot of people talk about about what they do on the side. Most people just want to talk only about their music and 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 it's it's almost like it, there's this mystery, this veil in most people's lives, right? Especially people you see online that are posting things about what, it, what, it, what is they're doing creatively. There's still a veil, like how did, who's paying for that? How did they afford to do that? Yeah. And, and um, like, it's not like I'm thinking about that as I'm scrolling on my phone, like who's paying for this like, <laughs> right. or whatever. But when I think about music, when I think about the music business and what we do, then I start thinking about, okay, who's paying for this? Who's promoting this? Who's doing this and that? And, um, and I don't think most people really think about that, especially, you know, people I might have on this podcast as a guest, they're not really thinking about that. They're thinking about their new album. And, uh, but the big picture, to be honest, is that includes it. You know, the, the yeah. fact that things have to be paid for finances. Um, it's not free. Nothing we do is free. Gas right. has to be put in the car. No matter how, how many free shows you may do as a musician, the gas isn't free, you know, and, and the t-shirts you buy to sell aren't free. Um, yeah. And so like, yeah, sure. Maybe and now and again, the beer is free and the alcohol is free or whatever. So we, we get our perks, right? But if yeah. you don't drink, then that's kind of like what cranberry juice is free. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm kind of going off on a, on a little tear here. I didn't mean to, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I just love that, that you're talking about, your side job, your, your real job, not even your side job. It's just like, it's almost like yeah. this dual thing that's meshed together in a way that I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about. There's gotta be other musicians, other artists out there that are doing uh, jobs on the side, but then full-time creative on their music at the same time. Yeah. And, and that's, that's something that I love, uh, love to hear about. Cause for me, I just do music uh, but I always, in the back of my mind, I'm like, if this doesn't ever pan, if this someday doesn't pan out, I mean, it's yeah. already panned out, I guess, but, <laughs> but yeah, well, you know, good. anything could happen. We could all, we could all end up on our asses at any point. I, that's the way I live my life. I'm never like comfortable. Right. Um, yeah. And so I always, in the back of my mind think, what would I do if I, if I couldn't do music, if I, if I couldn't play guitar, if I couldn't write, if I had no more ideas and if my voice got cut down, you know, I couldn't sing anymore. Um, it's terrifying to think, but also what would I do? And to be honest, I don't think that, I don't think I'd be good at a lot of things. I'd probably be doing, um, you know, that's, that's the problem. It's like, I have no skills outside of being a musician. And so I can't think yeah, of what like, I'd actually do. I mean, there's still like for you as being, you know, fucking my career at MXPX, then there's producing, you know, sure. And you can sure. do that for any form, like whether it's videos or bands, you know, I mean, everyone would want like, Oh, produce I, my career. That's in, sure. You sure. don't need your voice for that. In my opinion, I guess I'm just thinking like, if I couldn't do music period, like just add all anything just, like that, I have oh, to just yeah, go yeah, straight yeah. work for the man, get a nine to five, hopefully yeah. work from home job. But you, you never know. Maybe I'm going into the office wearing a suit and tie. <laughs> um, I just can't see it, to be honest. Yeah. I, I've I've talked about this over and over on the podcast. The fact that that I literally will work all day, every day of the week, just to not have a nine to five. Like I'll work more 
than I would a nine to five just to not have a boss, <laughs> just to not have somebody telling yeah. me, you know, sure, I have bosses in some ways, you know, uh, my team, my people advising me, telling me, yeah. sure, do that, but that's stupid or whatever, you know, like, but, <laughs> but it's not in the same way. Like, I'm not getting fired. I'm not, I'm not having yeah. to, you know, I get up in the morning because I want to. And, and that's, that's kind of just how I've lived my whole life. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, it's a, a 3 a.m. call. Sometimes it's, I wake up when I want to, which is still not that late these days, but, <laughs> but yeah. So uh, I'd love to talk about um, where you grew up, how you got into music, you know, yeah. and if, if the, that scene had anything to do with it, you know? Uh, yeah. It was, I have a pretty interesting childhood in the fact of where I grew up. I grew up in uh, like Compton, Linwood, Southgate of California. And so it's all hood, I guess you can say, quote unquote. Um, so it's a lot of hip hop, a lot of, a lot of like oldies, old school stuff like that, but it never really did anything for me at the time when I was younger. Um, I do remember right when I like heard rock and roll and I was just like, this is it. Um, I was, it was in the sixth grade. I was at a, a random friend's house. We we're, you know, hanging out, whatever. He had like a clock radio, just kind of changing the stations on whatever that was. It ended up landing on what I would know now as being K-Rock mm. and uh, Nirvana was on Smells Like Teen Spirit. And so, like, like I, I was born in 81, so I'm, I'm older. And so at that time, sixth grade, I'm not sure if it just came out or it's been out for a little bit. But as soon as I heard that, I was just, like, in a while. You know, just amazed at what it was. My friend that was there didn't understand why I liked it. And I didn't, I didn't know either. But I've never heard probably a guitar like that. I've never heard any type of rock. It's always been, hip, you know, just hip-hop for the most part. Um, and so found the radio station when I got home and then it was just kind of being in elementary school and being in that area, I didn't really have any one to get music from. So it was just the radio, K-Rock, whatever was mm -hmm. alternative at the time, you know? So I grew up on a lot of nineties alternative music. Um, so you grew so up in like, Compton, but you're into nineties alternative. Right. Like, how was right. that? What was the juxtaposition? Did you have friends that were all into the, the hip hop scene or? Yeah. The hip hop scene, like there, if you can believe it at, at that young of age gangs, you know, my, my parents were in gangs and you know, all, 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 the, all that type of stuff. And so it was hard. It was, a uh, it, it was sixth grade. So that kind of ended soon for being in that. Once I get it, got into junior high, it was, a, I found two other friends or at the, you know became my friends that were into the same music, you know, punk rock. So at that mm -hmm. point, green day came into play, you know, um, for me, like, uh, it was still alternative, but like Weezer, you know, things like that and alter, you know, alternative stuff. And then I kind of really just got into like the, a lot of the fat record stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Wasn't a musician or anything like that. Didn't think I wanted to play anything. It was just listening to music. And so didn't go any concerts because it, it was, you know, strict on us kind of staying in the house within the yard of the area we grew up in. So your parents were in like a gang, that. but they're still strict about things. Uh, yeah. Well, so at, at that time now, my, my, father's in, in prison my mom was no longer in gangs and so she mm. remarried um mm. and so we we lived right behind my grandma like she had a duplex so we lived back in her house um and so while things were still going around uh there was like a fenced off we had a fence in the front yard or whatever so it was, wasn't really like a don't go past that if you're playing outside type of deal because mm. because the area we're in and we're just, we're just younger um but it was it was it was hard my older sister older brother they they were my sister was in gangs she i remember her some random guy bringing her home and she's like full on bloody because she got jumped walking home from school mm. because she beat up some girls so the gang that that girl was in the guys jumped her on the way home so stuff like that you know um like i remember us walking having to walk home from school and like police were at the school because someone got stabbed with a screwdriver in a fight you know just all types of things like that um but in junior high, it kind of opened up a little bit more for me, music wise. You know, it started us into more what would end up being like punk rock, like Screeching Weasel came into play at some point. Um, and then um, for that, I got into playing drums in the eighth grade, like the, the school band, marching band. So it wasn't like an actual drum set, nothing okay. like that. It was just like I wanted to do some type of music. So playing drums is what I thought I wanted to do. And I did that just. For like the beginning band so that's kind of started it and then once i got into high school um we ended up moving to still in la but just kind of like uh in the 
uh, San Gabriel Valley area, so like West Covina, if you know where that's at at all, Pomona, where the yeah. glass house is. Yeah, the glass house. Know, things yep. are, yeah. Out so that's like the, kind, of, kind of like that area. Yeah, exactly. So um, went to, I went to actually ended up going to Baldwin Park High School, and then so that's kind of where everything opened up. More more people were into to rock music, obviously, at, at that point, and punk stuff. So started hanging out with those guys, and then finally I was like, okay, well, I want to play music type of deal. So I actually decided I wanted to play bass and was listening to a lot of, like, ska bands. Um, so, like, kind of my heroes growing up playing bass, not to name drop you, but, you know, your bass playing when I was in high school for um, Life in General, and then and then like Lesson Jake, like Roger from Lesson Jake, mm-hmm. Rancid, just kind of those, those movements. So that's how I started playing bass, and music in general was that. And I didn't know how to play. I, didn't get, I never had any like, training or nothing like that. It was just... I mowed a bunch of lawns and went to a pawn shop and bought a pawn shop, you know, pawn shop guitars. That's the um, way to do it, man. <laughs> yeah. Even like, and, and I didn't know how to tune it, nothing like that. Um, until I actually joined the school band, like I, the machine, you know, the tuners, the machine heads, I had those just in a straight line forever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cause I didn't know that they, that was tuning it. So they were just like in a straight line. Cause that's aesthetically to me, that's what was, how it was supposed to be. <laughs> so I always like, wanted to like try to tune it. <laughs> But yeah, it never quite lined up. So yeah, and then eventually uh, I just took a tuner and kind of like I was told what the the what the strings were supposed to be, mm-hmm. and so I took a tuner and just played the notes and found out what the notes were. Taught myself how to how to figure that out. See, this is just kind of self taught that way. Well before the internet was easy to like <laughs> look up how to do things, right? Yeah, it wasn't really used for that. Even if it existed by then, it probably did exist by then. It was in the nineties, so um, yeah. That's that's a great that's a great story. You you, you just aesthetically had the because nobody's <laughs> yeah. telling you what those things are. So you literally there's right. no way to know. Yep. You just yeah, thought and, and no one. Yeah. No one in my family is a musician. No one played anything. So my you, grandfather had a guitar, but he didn't play. He just had it back. Um, you know, in the forties. Yeah. So I've seen that okay. he had one. That's kind of it. Did you go see any shows back around that time after you had heard Nirvana? Um, my, but I, as I, you were so, starting bass. Not until I was in high school, actually. I wasn't able to go to a show. My first show was Less Than Jake, The Aquabats, and 22, uh, Catch 22. Catch 22. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that was that, that was at the, the Roxy in California that we did that. So mm-hmm. it was that's, that was at my very first concert. And then from there was like backyard shows, things like that. I wasn't, you know, able to go to a lot of, a lot of big stuff. You know, for me, that's big stuff going to Roxy, going to those type of mm-hmm. shows. Right. I wasn't well until I was like, maybe a junior or senior where like warp tour started to come into play. Mm-hmm. And so warp tour kind of changed. It changed the perspective of crowd size for everybody, not just bands, but like after warp tour, it was like, okay, now we know what a big crowd looks like. Yeah. But before it, w- the Roxy was a big show for, even for mm-hmm. us, like when we played the Roxy or the whiskey down in, in Hollywood, yeah. Those are I don't know how many people fit in those, but it's less than a thousand. So I mean, it's like oh, yeah. it dwarfs the size, or it, yeah. it is a dwarf compared to what we would do now, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just like it's a funny thing this perspective because back then it felt so big, and yeah. and it was big. It was it was our, you know, sort of like discovering the music scene and having yeah. because. The other, you know, I, I'm just like you, I, you know, I went to punk shows and I went to sh- shows that are about that size. And to me, that was huge too. Right. Um, but I had also gone to see you too. That was my first, okay. first real big concert. I had gone to a few concerts before that, but that was my first stadium. It was the, at the Tacoma dome. And to me, it wasn't, I wasn't computing, you know, the, di- the difference, um, because not too long before that, when I heard a band, a punk band on a cassette tape, mm-hmm. like somebody like all, I, I immediately thought these guys are playing like huge stadiums, you know? And, and so like, I kind of had like anybody that has a tape is playing stadiums kind of vibe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Was, and so when fell, I saw fell you out of reach a little bit, yeah, 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 yeah. But so I saw you too. And that solidifies like, okay, these guys are obviously huge, but, and then I started going to regular shows more often and, and realizing, oh, there's so many, so many levels to the game. You, know, you yeah. start here and you go up like anything. Man. Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, 
we would pile pile into whoever had a car at the time to get to to these shows. Mm-hmm. So I mean, <clears throat> I think the Pomona shows were a little bit more our reach to go to, just um, being able to drive wise. So like, yeah, but the Glass House probably fits more than the Roxy and the Whiskey. Yeah, that was you know, kind of things a, like that. When we played Glass House, that was always a kind of a big venue back yeah. in those days. It was like, oh, this is a big show, like tons of people and. Um, and it still is honestly they do great shows still there I'm so glad yeah. that that place is, has not been closed yeah, up held on. yeah yeah good times <laughs> so you grew up out you grew up in Compton and then you grew up out there when mm-hmm. did you end up in Florida uh, probably about five or six years ago I would say um, it was right during one of the hurricanes that actually hit Jacksonville mm-hmm. uh, but right before like I was on my way here while it was on its way here but it was just a, a good money saver um, to move. You know, it's at, at that time I was touring a bunch. Um, not with you know, it wasn't Danny Attack, it wasn't Knives or anything like that. But I was in a, I was in a hardcore band that was in Germany, and so I would tour with them back and forth. Um, I was mm. in a like a post hardcore screamo type band out of England, and I would tour with them, and then um, whatever random stuff I was doing on my own. So I was just spending a lot of time on the road. So having to keep my stuff just in California and pay as much as California mm-hmm. to pay in California for things, it just made sense to move here. And I knew people here already from my like touring or it was like the tattoo industry, things like that. So it was just, you know, fuck it. Let's just make the move yeah. and pay a fraction here than what I'm doing over there. And I can always visit, you know, while I'm on tour and go to, go to LA or something, Yeah, which is what, so I do that, you know, so I just hang out. Over there, I get to see my friends when I play shows, you know, think, you know, and just kind of focus on what I want to do finally. Because um, I did, like, there was a big gap where I wasn't playing any music. Not, not, I wasn't not playing any music, but I wasn't touring. I wasn't playing, like, a bunch of shows. I was writing, trying to start bands. I didn't do, I didn't go anywhere, but I was, oh, I've always had to work full time. At one point, I went to school for audio engineering. And so when I finished that, I was doing, um, I decided I want to kind of move into, like, a, a post-production for movies type of deal. Because I, I, I love movies and cinema stuff. And then I got the uh, the uh, offer to play bass in a touring band overseas. This was like 2011, and so like once I, I was like, yeah, finally my dream type of deal. Did that all expenses paid? Went over there and is once I got that, I just didn't look back. Yeah. that's that's what I knew I wanted to do because I never had a taste of actual touring before. Mm-hmm. You know, small regional tours up and down the coast of California is easy, um, but once I went overseas and saw what I could be doing, like finally, so I, was, I just stop doing the audio engineering stuff um and they just went and just played bass for a couple of years for that band and then what what band was that it? band uh the band's called through this defiance they're, what is it uh, they're not around anymore through this defiance through this defiance not around yeah anymore. it's, it's like a Sh- shorter commute to on the east coast <laughs> as well if you're going to england all the time yeah oh yeah <laughs> for sure yeah the go back and forth or all the layovers and stuff yeah but you yeah don't want to so be once that happened it was kind of like, this is what I want to do. So I, at that point, I was just doing everything I had to do to follow that dream. Had a, I was in a, I was in a hard rock band after that, you know, that which did really well. I mean, they're they're they got they're no longer a band either, but they were like uh, when we were in that band, we were like in movies off the of Lionsgate, like in one of the Punisher films. They're uh, in one of the football commercials and stuff like that. So nice, it, you got a little taste I was just of okay. To do yeah, anything I can do to, to keep playing, regardless of what the music was, you know, just as long as I was having fun and was able to live still, you know, not hurt or whatever, mm-hmm. then I was doing that. And then, so like I said, I was doing all, all that touring stuff and then decided to make the move here and then um, was doing all, you know, those touring stuff, which wasn't all the time. And then I made my own band here in Florida. Did It did pretty well for uh, like six months to a year. And then they they decided that they wanted to kind of just work and have a steady life type deal so i was like god damn it you know again um so that's why i decided to do danny attack and it was probably like 2017 2018 and i was like well if i'm gonna fail at this and not do this it's gonna be because of me because of me now yeah. you know so i started doing just my kind of punk songs playing, playing them acoustic um my first thing i did with that because of the tours i did overseas um i was able to get signed to like a small label and they took me over there and I released an album over there and did a tour for I think it was a month or something like that. And then it was just from then on, it was just been kind of Danny and Tech until I did Knives. But I was I was over there during the pandemic. 
like um playing it i was in england when uh we got like we all like everyone on the tour got like an email from the embassy saying we had to come back because of the the COVID stuff, mm-hmm. and so we had to get playing plane rides back, and that kind of slowed me down a little bit because uh, obviously you know COVID. Uh, did you luckily, tour at all during COVID? I did. Like as Danny luckily, attacked, Florida opened up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, super early. Um, so everything shut down in in March. No one was doing anything. My first show back was in December of that same year, um, locally, and then I got COVID. <laughs> from uh-huh. it, from being from the very from first that show, show <laughs> yeah from the very first show i played Oops. ended up in the hospital i had like pneumonia all this stuff i had like uh-huh. asthma so it didn't help anything at all um and then you know a f- few months went by and then i was just like okay well i'm gonna do what i can still you know did got my shots you couldn't play certain things unless you had you know <laughs> right you know, your shot you know yeah. the different the different stuff so i wasn't gonna not play music so i, I got them did everything i needed to do and then yeah, played like. Luckily for me, like, the like where I was at, the smaller bars and stuff like that is what opened up. You know, you couldn't do all yeah. any of the big stuff. You know, so I, for me that was I was easy. I just kept playing, and uh, just wherever I can do it, and uh, you know, people wanted some type of entertainment, and so yeah, it was easy for me to to, to go around and kind of fly under the radar for these places that were opening back up yeah i was surprised it was pretty early on but i was in waco early on during the pandemic and and when it shut down right after mxp we did our last show like leap year april and then it's not april i don't know what march sorry it was march going into april right um anyway i was just surprised that that they had the the bars shut down in Waco in Texas. I was like, wait, this is Texas because Florida wasn't shut down. It was ju- it was like everywhere else, just except Florida. Yeah, and it turned out Florida did the right thing. I, I mean, it was like you're gonna get it, you're gonna get it, or if you don't want to, stay home. You know, whatever. But right. um, yeah, I can't believe they made all these people get vaccines, and it's just ridiculous. Uh, one thing after another, it'll be there'll be something else next, right? Yeah. Uh, but no matter what, through it, we are going to do music. We're going to keep writing songs, keep playing. And, you know, yeah. there's always people that want to hear music. There's always people that need an escape from reality. Uh, and, uh, you know, just for a night, just get out there. Uh, I yeah. want to talk about Knives. So so yeah. how did Knives, you know, still going, right? Yeah, it's actually relatively new. Um, knives, it uh, wasn't this last birthday that I had, but the birthday before that, I was on a tour of course i was on tour and i uh, hit one of my good friends up and i was just like hey i want to do um because I, I was having for the past few years like a, a show on my birthday you know just because it's the fall whatever it's a good time to have shows out here and so i was doing a show on my birthday and this year or that year i was like i want to do something different i want to make all these songs punk rock and play a punk show you know i want it to be a super exciting it's only it can only be so exciting at an acoustic show you know just to have fun and party and so we put together a band and uh, when I before I left for that tour, I was uh, kind of practicing stuff with him. And then we got that together while I was on tour, made them practice while I was on tour. And then I got back home from tour either the day before or the day of, of that show. It was all booked, ready to go. And uh, it wasn't – I think I, I think I, at that point I did decide to call it Knives because it's a lot of with the branding, with how I write my music and things like that. Uh, it's kind of the darker stuff. But – we we played it. Um, a lot of pe- everyone, a lot of people came out. It was a really really big show, um, and it was just fun, super fun. And then there was there was some things that happened with certain members at the time because it's not the same lineup now. Um, and I was just like, this is why I don't like doing plays. <laughs> like to get everyone on the same page. This is why I don't play in a band type of stuff. Uh, so I was like, you know, I I had ideas of keep keeping it going, but at that point it was just like ne- never mind. I was just gonna keep doing what I'm doing solo solo wise. And then that was fun, super fun. I'm glad I did it. Maybe we'll do it again next year or something like that. So I didn't do it again. Um, and then my buddy Brandon, who's actually the guitar player still, he was the same member from then, um, was like, dude, we got to keep doing it. He's been like kind of pushing me the whole time. Let's do it. Everyone loved it. And, you know, you loved it, this and that. I was like, okay, let's do it again. But we're going to get new members, different members, the ones that I had issues with, with not wanting to show up on time for like sound checks and you know things like that it's just, it's one show and you and you know what time you're supposed to be here and you're not here yeah you know for sound check things like that so we found new members um and uh we just kind of went for it um 
the our current bass player isn't the original bass player when we came back. Um, he he's in a different band as well, and so he's and they tour they tour a bunch. So he's off doing that. So we had to unfortunately replace that bass player because he just we couldn't do both. He couldn't do both. Mm-hmm. So we found a new bass player. Our same drummer. Um, he's with us, uh, Josh. But that started off, and then it, for me, it was kind of easy to write the music for it um, because they're kind of because I you know I started playing punk rock anyways and so it's kind of how it comes out the songs um i i'm using the same songs that i wrote for danny attack that i have albums for but i'm just making them punk rock now mm. and so you know before they're they're folky or they're like kind of murder folk or folk punk things like that it's it was an easy transition to make some of these just pop punk songs which is how i grew up which is kind of how i would imagine me playing these songs back then when i was trying to write music but i wasn't smart enough then or whatever the case was you know now i can do it and so uh, it's just fun, um, nostalgic punk rock. Along the way, I've gained a lot of uh, more influences with like through metal or, or you know hardcore stuff. So which is why we have that screaming element mm. that you hear yeah. uh, from Brendan. Um, so I know it's not it's not for everybody, for sure. But it's just kind of like what a collaboration of what we all of the band within the band likes now. Yeah. And so, but it's, it's always mainly just kind of pop punk, my clean vocal driven stuff. And the, we try and do it to where the screams are very like, hit the parts that need to be hit, emotional stuff type of type of things, you know, yeah, uh, for that part of it. But it's just I don't know. It's a fun, it's a fun band. Like the guys are really good at what they do, and, and they're they're my it's cool. They're my friends as well. So that's that always helps, you know, to like the people you're in a band with. Absolutely, um, it's yeah. huge. Knives, Florida. I mean. That's not a town. That's just what you called it, right? Well, yeah. So knives, uh, I couldn't get knives on on the social media. It's just knives because sure. it's just knives. Um, and then I had like knives band. There was one where I on Instagram or on Facebook. I, I used to have it like K N V S because knives was taken there, and I didn't want to put knives Florida or knives F L mm-hmm. or anything because I didn't want it to be just kind of like. It makes uh, you more local rather than right. right. I just want to be. I didn't want to be branded to Florida. Not that we don't like Florida, but none of us are from here. We all live here now. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. I, I'm from California. My drummer's from Virginia. Um, Brendan's from upstate New York, and our bass player Adam is from Colorado. You could probably so, still like, be mayor of Jacksonville. <laughs> right. You were Lil Duval, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> oh yeah. But um, do you yeah, ever? So do you just, know him by the way? Being in no, t- no. <laughs> never see him around town. No. Do you know who I'm talking about? Not really either. No. <laughs> but so I don't like. He's a comedian slash singer. He's like, yeah, anyway, oh, is it? he's from Jackson. Lil Duval. Uh, he's like a yeah. rapper, singer, comedian. He does stand up comedy, but he's been in movies and he's just like a celebrity. Oh, really? He's a celebrity. He's probably like Jacksonville's oh. biggest celebrity, I would think. <laughs> like mascot and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> So anyway, okay. Yeah, yeah. So knives. It's just knives, but you had to. You it's put, just knives. I had to add FL yeah. because of I couldn't get it, and I wanted. I did want to keep it the same across the board because it, it used to like it used to be all over the place. Mm-hmm. Whatever I can look up on the um, like whatever was on so on Instagram was different mm-hmm. than Facebook, yeah, or YouTube. So I, I was able to now get them all to be knives FL. Okay, um, makes it easy. So it, that's what it, it's what it is now. Yeah, but it, it is just knives. That's cool. That's a cool like. I didn't realize that Knives was was punk rock versions of all your songs as Danny Attack because I've listened to both. Yeah. I like both, and Danny Attack is like. It's like you're a punk rock troubadour. It's a lot of ballads. It's a lot of heartfelt stuff. It's acousticy, traveling songs, love songs, heartbreak songs. It's it's right up my alley, um, yeah. and, and then putting that into punk rock. Maybe that's why I liked it so much because I really love the sound of of what Knives yeah, does. Like morose. It's a little bit more. Worse. Uh, but there's a there's. I love that you have the balance of both. Like you can go out mm-hmm. and do do both tours, uh, put yeah. out both types of albums. Um, that means you don't really need to put. I mean, do you put out? Do you always put out Danny Attack songs first? in their acoustic vibe and then knives there has been i want to say there's a couple songs that i wrote simultaneously and i think knives might have released it first mm. but it would have been like um something old uh not old but like uh something early on Actually, in no 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 with knives? I, 
Yeah, I think um, oh, so. Everything has been put out. Danny Attack first. Um, I did write two songs, Knives, a, a song called Knives, and a song called Chemicals that I wrote at the same time, like while I was while I was in Knives, mm. doing both. So mm-hmm. I wrote it kind of for both. I when I was writing it, I had it, I had it in mind. Okay, it's going to go this way for Knives, and it's going to go this way for Danny Attack type of deal. And then Brendan helped on a, on a, on those as well of like you know words and things like that. So that was kind of cool having having input because normally it's just me writing this stuff mm-hmm. so it's just this is what it is it's already what it is but because those two songs were written with with him or you know as, as me thinking about both it, it, it was able to kind of bring it at, add more character to it you know that that brendan helped with so that was that was cool but physical things knives hasn't had anything physical as of like an actual record things like that we have we had singles up that I take that I've taken down since because it's of me playing drums because I just we went to the studio we didn't have a drummer I wanted to put put out a couple songs so I went and played everything um, Brendan came in did his, his screams and then we put those out but now that we have a drummer who's a full time drummer we went back we recorded the songs I took me off of that that way no one hears those and then now we have songs online of the full band as opposed yeah. to just the Danny Attack show as times you know right right um, so we we did that but. Physically, like I've had, I had two other albums out, um, out on my own that did other labels put out, and then I got, I went on to uh, uh, Punkerton Records, which released my very last album. At the same time, we signed a contract for both for uh, Knives as well as Danny Attack. Danny Attack, my songs happened to already be written and ready to go, so that just released, you know, yeah. almost as soon as we signed, as I signed. And now the uh, Knives stuff, we went into the studio. Well, we went and uh, recorded all the drums in a studio, and then I have a, a like a, a studio downstairs that I, that I have. So we recorded everything there, um, everything else, and then uh, had it mixed and mastered um, by uh, Chris Fogel from Black and Bloom. Uh, he's done like a bunch of strung out stuff and then Dolly Pops, and, or yeah, the uh, Bomb Pops, Dolly Rots, things like gotcha. that. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the deal uh, with yeah, Punkerton so, Records? Can I ask you that? Like, what's their situation? I never, I'd never yeah, heard of them, and there, then I started. Yeah, they're out of um. So I don't know the full story. Um, I I believe he's from Texas. That the owner, of, okay. uh, Brandon. That's right. He's from Texas. Texas, and then moved to Ohio. He was in the the military. I don't know what branch, things like that. Um, and I do know that he was. He's always been in music. He's not a musician at all. He doesn't play anything. Mm. Um, he's just loved music. He's booked shows before, um, and then um, I'm not sure how or what what the deal was, but I know he um released a couple of buddies' music, you know, like whether or not they're on CD or record or whatever the case was. Yeah. And then he just kind of built it up that way. Um, I, I'd never heard of him before, um, but when I was on one of my tours, uh, one of my buddies from Larry and His Flask um, was, reached out to him to book me a show in Ohio, in Columbus. And uh, he helped out with that, came out to the show, heard my set, saw my draw, things like that. And then um, we the next day uh, we had kind of a lunch type of deal, and so he talked to me about about s- signing that way. So I just talked to him a bunch, kind of looked at the bands that that he was working with and things like that, and just the kind of deal. And it's not like it's a get rich deal; it's just a you know a fair. Yeah. I like music. You want to play music? You want your music out? I want your music out. Let's see if we can do this. You know, and it was just like yeah, like this does not hurt me in one bit. You know, I still own my stuff and. I, I would love to have a vinyl out, you know, another vinyl out. And so this is the next step for me to do that. He had some contacts and I was like, okay, well, this, this, this works. Um, at the same time, I was like, okay, cool. Let's, let's drop contracts, uh, give it to the lawyer, things like that. Um, and then I was like, I also have a band <laughs> that's like relatively new. We don't have any, any, any releases out. Here's, here's uh, what I'm working on type of deal. And then he, um, I gave it to him, and then it just, I guess he loved it. And then so we ended up start talking about that as well. And then eventually um, came into doing both bands, or both acts, I guess you could say. Um, but the bands that he, he, he's been signing are like, oh, like super rad, like super rad bands. Um, yeah. We did, we did um, a Punkerton quote-unquote tour from Punk Rock Bowling. We played at a, in, in Vegas, this last one. At um, uh, Hawks and Heifers, like one of the after show club things. Mm-hmm. So we played there with two of the bands, and then we did another festival in Illinois seven or eight days later and just toured to and from, you know? Yeah. 
and it was just a the, yeah he's been submitting fun that's so cool because he's been submitting a lot of things to music monday for the podcast and that's yeah i don't know if it was you that submitted the first time or if it was him probably you but that's where i first heard knives it's where i first heard yeah i think the initial one i believe um, he did the last one that you okay. saw oh okay okay um, the new one um but the very first one the for home i believe There's, is the one that's what i want to talk about home yeah. that's my favorite <laughs> song so i don't know man like i really like your voice on that song it is perfect it doesn't even matter like i like i like the um both versions, you know, the, the acoustic version's cool with the mm -hmm. like, kind of uh, Americana sound, um, yeah. shuffles and stuff like that. But then, you know, he, but I had heard Knives first. And so, like, right. that was, like, what really hooked me is that, that vocal performance particularly mm -hmm. was, like, that's it. That's the song. Yeah. Um, but I still feel that way all these, all you know, years later. Honestly, it's been yeah. years since we've had, you know, that that's one of the few songs I've actually put on <laughs> my personal like listening playlist. Like I have a like punk songs yeah. playlist, you know, like yeah. if I hear a cool punk song, I'll put it on that. And it's like, yeah. it's, yeah. it's literally classic punk songs. You know, there's like yeah. an offspring song on there, a rancid <laughs> song, uh, you know, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. Like things like when you yeah, think, that's an, that's an honor, dude. but yeah, that <laughs> song is good. It's really good. And, and it's this, the chorus is good chorus is good but it's it's the verses that really get me that bring the chorus home huh uh -huh. and don't pardon the pun there but um <laughs> take us through the song let's just talk let, maybe maybe i should play it for a second for everybody to hear just refresh a lot of yeah. people have heard the song on the on the podcast that are listening but there's gonna be people right listening the first time do you mind no, yeah, if no, we no. play a little bit let's just play a little bit we won't play the whole thing but just get get a vibe people That's enough. That's that gives people the idea and kind of interject real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Like, was I supposed to hear anything, or no? Oh, you didn't hear anything. No, probably <laughs> not, because it's okay, just cool. feeding through well, my we'll my thing. In post. <laughs> you know, it, it's on the recording. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry, I I've never played <laughs> anything good. in front like two people, so I didn't actually oh, yeah. think about that. Sorry, That's brother. All good. I, I know the song. <laughs> you know the song, right? You're just yeah, rocking along to me. Um, yeah, that song. You know, I just played the through the going i ended it right as the second verse was starting and okay. uh so people get a little little uh vibe man that song like like i said the verse part really just right away hooked me it's got a hook mm -hmm. and then the lyrics are are just enough kind of interesting you're talking about blood for a second there but but it's not like stupid you know it's not it's it's uh but yeah i i have to teeter a lot between like what's corny like yeah to be like you said to not to, to not sound stupid yeah like, like their love stories or their breakup stories whatever but how many people have done that you know so i gotta make it not be like oh he's just saying that word or using that term just to say it to be cool or different or whatever so i definitely have to like be smart about how i use some of the my phrasing and the darker lyrics i guess i use yeah absolutely is there a story behind when you wrote the song um it's a, it's, 
it's actually well, it's a it's a love story basically uh, uh, down to it. Um, I wrote it a few years back, um, actually while I was in a relationship um, that I thought well, uh, she cheated on me a few times um, um, in, the, in the relationship, and but I wrote it while I was happy, like that that song. If you listen to it, you know it, it just talks about like. Um, really being together and things you would do for the other person and just kind of everything just feeling like, you know, home, like you find, oh, you finally found your home type of deal. And then I wrote it in a, a certain way at that time. And then once we actually broke up, I, I changed a couple of things around because it wasn't like um, recorded or anything like that. I just had it mm-hmm. as a song I wrote. Um, so it's a love story most of the whole time until the very end where it says, now you're gone. Um, and because, you know, that's this how, how it ended up working out. Mm-hmm. But I, where the that makes darker, it that makes it more sad makes it hit a little harder you know yeah yeah because you're like oh because it does like in in both forms that i wrote it or for danny attack and for knives it's, it's a happy you know song you know it's the the, the key changes and the chord progression it's you know it's an upbeat song so you don't know really unless you're paying attention to the lyrics that it's what the song's about mm-hmm. um until until that very last last line you're like oh shit never mind <laughs> you know yeah, I was happy for a second. Like, oh shit, it just kind of dropped me down. Um, All good but, things end, right? Like, yeah, yeah, and it just kind of is. It's like you know, being in love, being young, and just everything is isn't how it seems, I guess. Um, but a lot of my songs are like that, and that one ended up not being any different. Um, but it kind of like started off a whole thing for me with that with that song because mm-hmm. it, it was it's off like a, a, my first album now um so that kind of started off and how i was going to start writing things um i love movies like love love movies so the stories i try and write i think try and i I didn't know at the time but i was grabbing more from like my long like my like or love of cinema stuff and how like i wanted stories to write out or to play out or the imagery i'm thinking when i'm writing and the music video i want for that song and i, I can't do that obviously because money wise so you can't rent, make these big old le- elaborate things to you know for these these songs but in my head the imagery that i use and like my influences comes from my love of like movies and like horror movies really mm-hmm. and so i kind of put that intertwined with the love part or breakup part of these songs to make what the what the lyrics end up being because they're because there's a lot more stuff that you haven't heard. And that, that stuff is like, you know, it talks about, you know, a girl being buried under the, your house or something. Like yeah. That, you know? And it's just phrased different. You know? <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've been, you know, just scratched the surface of your catalog and I've listened to a couple other songs. You've got a lot of great songs. Um, but like, I just didn't have time to like listen to it all yet, you know? So I encourage everybody to like, go check out, Danny Attack, but also Knives. Does Knives have a full album, or is it just a couple songs? This uh, actually, um, I'm not sure if you saw it yet, but I sent you our full album that just that's coming out in November. It's ten songs. Oh yeah, I didn't um, have a chance to. I was last night. Yeah, so or this that, morning. Yeah, so that's on there. <laughs> yeah, so that yeah, right, exactly. So that's there. Um, it's full ten songs. It's we have Home's going to be on there. Um, awesome. Dance Electric, the one that you just aired uh, the mm-hmm. other week. That that'll be on there. And then there's a couple like. No, I wouldn't say they're slow songs, but they're just more straightforward, ser- more serious songs, I guess. Like the next week, tomorrow, not tomorrow, we'll see, Wednesday. On Saturday, we shoot a music video nice. for a song called uh, "Oh, This Sin of Mine," and it's um, it's more, it's a more serious song. It, it's still like punk and all that in its own way, I guess. But it's uh, that one's gonna be cool. We have you know, cool. actual locations we're doing. It's an actual story-ish type thing. So that'll be that'll be that's the next single that comes out in September. What's that called? So, sin or oh, this sin of mine. Oh, this sin of mine. Cool, yeah. man. I, I dig it. Um, I will put the inf. Well, I'll just put you know new album out. Whatever those dates were, you just said. <laughs> yeah, I'll send, I'll send you info. That's cool. That's very cool, man. This is going to come out Monday, so so. Oh, okay. uh, It'll be obviously before the album's out and all that, but there's tons of music for people to listen to right now um, uh, from you, Danny Attack. Mm-hmm. You know, you, it's all up there on whatever. Yeah, there's there's four knife songs too up on our Spotify. As Excellent. Well. So Excellent. like the, the two that just came out, uh, two off the uh, our old singles, I guess that will we will remove 
once the new album comes out. But mm-hmm. there's two on there. There's a <laughs> there's a a Blink mashup up there as well. I did uh, one of those like a Blink Way Two mashup. So that's on there. But uh, yeah, I mean, this it's plenty of stuff. Right on, dude. Yeah. Can we do a top five? You can choose which one you want to do. But before we go, I started, I guess I'm starting it now, but I was doing it for myself. Some people were asking me like my top five foods, my top five movies. Okay. So you can choose top five movies or foods, depending on what you, you said you like movies. Or you can do both. But Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, that I like, right? Top five movies. Yes, your top five. Okay. <laughs> no, or that your mom likes. I don't know. I don't if you know. Want to, like, I want you to ask me what my top. Five <laughs> no, 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 no. Some people were asking me, so I'm asking you. <laughs> okay, okay, got it, got it. Uh, okay, well, top five. I'd rather do food than movies because movies, it's like a whole thing. There's so many genres of movies. There are. It's Foods, hard. I, I'm, it's hard to choose. I want to say I'm picky with food, but I do like what I like, and I don't like a lot of stuff for <laughs> okay. texture purposes. Okay, like so. So number five. Um, I'll go start from the bottom, five to one. Well, whatever you, you can go bottom, to t- whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to be in order. If you're just like, this is no I, particular order. I will say that my very like all time favorite food that I'll like, if everyone's like, let's go do this, we're, I'm like, let's go. Like, you know, or like, hey, you want to go with me? I will pay for us to go do this or something like that, you know? It's a uh, sushi. Sushi. So yes. I do love, I do love sushi. Um, I will go all the time, anytime, probably. Gro- grocery store um, sushi? No, t- no, no it's t- gotta be good. I don't, I don't, I don't cook. Yeah, I don't really cook much. <laughs> so like, I, I, I could make like salmon ish, you know, maybe, but like, it's definitely like sushi and and the salmon. Like, I love salmon, so that's what I get in the sushi is going to be salmon mm, related okay. stuff. So that's my my number one. Although my band, and I guess I'll put this as number two, my band, and probably anyone who really knows, we will say nachos, like any type of nachos. On the last tour we're at, I think I had nachos at every place I could get them at. Nachos. Because it's just, but because it's also like lighter, it's a lighter food. It's not like, there's not a bunch of protein and nothing like that. And because they're before shows, and I don't like to eat a bunch of stuff before playing the shows. You, you can Especially choose when to stop. Right. And, and, and I'll waste food all the time. <laughs> so they're like, you didn't even eat any of it. <laughs> I was like, well, I ate what I wanted to eat. That was kind of it. And so like, I'm always like, there's always just food for everybody because I don't I never finish my food down. Um, so nachos, uh, would be second, I guess. Okay. Number three, I would say Indian food. Oh, like I, yeah. I really do love Indian food. Um, you like spicy? No, I See, guess that, that's the thing. You don't like Vindu, like, so you like tandoori like though. Food, it's always like the mildest, like the level. Cause a lot of times you could pick the level of heat Yeah. now. And so it's like zero for me. You just like the um, creaminess and the rice and the the, the flavor, the, chi- the flavor, yeah, like the, the chicken, flavor, just not the spice flavor of everything. Yeah, like the masala or like the paneer type stuff. Okay, you know, like the, which is like what's spin- spinach, spinach? Or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. I like that stuff. Yeah, um, it's, it's yeah, such so a that, weird so, food though. If you think about <laughs> it, it's so weird. It's like this is yeah, like slimy um, and well, but not slimy. But as a general, I won't I won't eat like just the spinach myself. I have to have like once again go into the restaurant. Have the different things to pick out, pick None. out, and eat it like that. Yeah, exactly. Like the whole experience. I, I like eating out as well. So the experience of that, cool. I do love. Um, four and five. I I guess I could say pizza. I think pizza's <laughs> probably five because it's you pizza's know pizza's five. Okay. Yeah, you have to. It is what it is. Um, Easy to. So we four, eat a lot of that as punkers on the road. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's always like the venue. Oh yeah, we'll get you dinner and it's fucking pizza. Yeah. You know that's always what the case is. Um, but number four, um, are you Mexican? I am Mexican, and but that's not on so, the, that's just food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not Mexican food; it's just food. <laughs> um, I guess I can put that in there because it, it does blanket like enchilada. Like I love enchiladas and stuff like that. There's certain things I do love. What but, style? What? What? Like a chicken enchilada? So beef? like Ch- cheese, um, chicken. With like red sauce though, like I like the red sauce more oh, than anything. Okay. So chicken cheese, things like that. But like I hate, 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 hate avocado. Low. What? Anything avocado? Oh my god, like, we're the opposite. Yeah, I, know. I love. <laughs> it's, it's like, like all avocado. I eat. No salsa. I don't like like lemon or lime type stuff. No citrus. Uh, no olives. So all the stuff that goes on top of an enchilada, I'm like, I don't want that shit. Salsa. Like so, I'm very picky. Like a lot of authentic Mexican food, I just don't like. 
too much just, flavor. I don't know what. Too much spice. Be, yeah, maybe that's the, the, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's the spice part. But yeah, so I know it's like I said, it's, it's easier to choose because it's just I know what I don't like for food wise and movies like. Like I, I love horror, horror films, but I love like a good action movie, I like the dumb ones from the eighties and nineties. What's that shit all day? One of my friends has never had salad ever, and I was like, salad? "Are you kidding me? You never had salad, <laughs> never once." And and we were at a we we went to a steak dinner the it was in Reno, in fact, uh, and and he's like, "We never had salad before," and so I was like, "Well, there's a beet salad on here. You should get the beet salad," and he's like. He to, he's like, sure, let's just get it. He he lied to me. So the lady's like, oh, you're going to love that. She, our server, also was there when we all found out he had never had a salad. So we're like, what? That's, you got to try it. He's like, nope, yeah. I won't try a salad. And we're like, get this beet salad. And he's like, okay, we'll get the beet salad. So we get the beet salad, and we're going to share it. And he and I'm like going to like give him some. He's like, nope. And I'm like, damn you you tricked me and so i had i ate the whole beet salad myself uh but at the end i was like hey you got to put some salad stuff on your plate so that she thinks you ate and she's going to ask you how the salad was and you're going to say great and then she's going to be happy and sure enough he puts some on his plate like she comes up how was the salad and he's like oh it was great she's like oh my god so she feels great about herself like giving him his first salad ever even though it was a beet salad which doesn't really count why did he not want it after all? He was just like, can't do it. I think can't. he was lying to me. He never wanted it. He was just like fucking with me and saying, just go ahead and get this. I'll eat the salad. But then he was like, yeah, yeah. I, I think that was his plan all along. Yeah. yeah. I haven't, I haven't eaten salad now. I'm not going to start. I'm not going to start now. I'm going to find this this far. Well, I, actually, I don't like steak. You don't like steak? Uh, yeah. So, well, okay. So Too much actually, iron. Yeah. I, the texture, just the steak in general, I just don't like it. And um, I, actually, you know, uh, Ryan from uh, Epoch Empire. Yeah. Uh, so he's one of my friends as well. And I was out in, in, in uh, where were we at? Jerome. Here. Oh, okay. Well, where? Because yeah, uh, he lives in Prescott. Um, but we went to Jerome and I played a show as he came out. Um, and he, he, he took us Air, out. Arizona, in, right? In Arizona, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, he like uh, was, took everyone out to eat. And, you know, for whatever reason, he wanted to pay for everything. So it was fine. Um, so I decided to get something small, whatever. It's like, no, dude, you need to try the steak. I was like, dude, I hate steak. <laughs> he was like, no, you gotta buy a steak. And no, I was like, I'll just get a salmon. He was like, get both. I was like, no, god damn it, Ryan. Like, I don't want it. He was like, I'm getting it for you. So I, he bought whatever this fucking steak was, and it was probably the most delicious meal I've ever had in my life. Like, it was whatever is some restaurant, random restaurant in Jerome. It looked amazing. And it, so it looked great. So I, I, I ate it regardless, but it was so good. And like I haven't been able to like eat that steak again anywhere. You know, I've right. tried it's just never as good. It. Never as yeah. good. But that that place was super good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's steak. Steak. I didn't put that on my top five list from a few episodes back, but steak definitely is it's one of my favorites. But I, I don't want to eat it all the time either. Like I, I want to eat a good yeah. steak and then I don't I wanna not eat a bad steak. Can you get like gout from eating <laughs> A bunch of steak or something can you get something from eating a bunch of meat or steak like that i mean you can get a lot All of times. things from anything you know yeah, <laughs> yeah honestly yeah i'm not too worried about i don't eat that much steak i mean you probably have to eat a lot of steak yeah. um but anyway hey back to knives <laughs> steak yeah. knives <laughs> steak knives yeah steak, no, uh, we, we have a uh, no wonder you don't like, like steak have, like, puns <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have like puns while we stay on stage so, like everyone's having a knives day have a, have a uh, knives night, things like that. Nice. Um, <laughs> knives. <laughs> right. Uh, it's, that's funny. Dude, thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Being cool. Um, this will be out this Monday. Everybody, check out Danny Attack. Stay tuned for the, the Knives album coming uh, in. What, what's the date again? Uh, that's going to be November 15th or 16th. It's uh, whatever the Friday is. Somewhere in there. Um, yeah, so one of those days we have uh, that coming out. We have another new single coming out in September on the 13th, Friday the 13th. Actually, it comes out, uh, music video and all. Awesome. Uh, we have videos on YouTube. Everything's on Punkerton Records as well. Uh, Danny Attack doc- Actually, DannyAttack.com has a Knives page on there as well. So you can get all of our merch, mm. um, all the songs, videos, everything's there. Um, that's about it. If Excellent. you're if you're a team out there, hit us up. We need we need a team. 
If you're a team member, you know who if to call. If you're a team member. <laughs> All right. Awesome. players over here looking for a team. Thanks for doing it. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right. Peace out, everyone.